Hey everybody, Captain John here at Real Impression Sport Fishing Charters. Hey, I finally got some time to do some of these how-to videos that I promised you over the course of the season and when the season was coming to an end. We put the boat away in October and then we had Thanksgiving and deer season and Christmas and New Year's. So finally the holidays are behind us and I can uh, show you some of these videos, some of these how-to things that I wanted to um, that I wanted to get out to you guys. Um, and what I'm going to do, I think, as far as how I go about this is just answer the questions that I get um, confronted with the most, whether it's on the charter boat itself or at the boat launch or at the fish cleaning station. And one of the questions I seem to have gotten a lot this past year, and it's fairly simple, um, do I prefer single or treble hooks? Well, I'll go over that and I'm going to tell you the pros and cons to each one. With a single hook, if you decide to go that route, make sure you buy the single hooks that have an offset shank to them. If you can see that the tip of the hook is not in line with the shank, it's offset. So when that fish bites, the tip of the hook is gonna grab some part of the meat of the fish's mouth and get set. Unlike this single hook, where it's perfectly straight, and I think the fish has the ability to bite this and just come off, because it's not offset. Um, the con to a single hook is that it's one hook. Um, I think the initial hookup percentage is smaller because you've only got one hook doing the work. However, a pro to a single hook is when the fish is on, the fish stays on better because there's nothing for this hook to use in its favor to wiggle itself out of the fish's mouth. That being said, we'll go to the treble hook. A treble hook obviously has three hooks on it. So I think the initial hookup percentage is better. However, a con to a treble hook is it can use the other two or one hook that's not in the fish's mouth as a lever to kind of wiggle the entire thing out of the fish's mouth. So it's personal preference. I like to use treble hooks on flies and more single hooks on spoons. I do very well with both, but I do make sure that if I buy single hooks, it is an offset shank. All right, so if that was the only thing I was gonna talk about, it was gonna make a really short video. So I think the next most um, asked question is, how exactly do I tie my flies? Um, I get a lot, if not a lot, all of my flies from Jeff Balza at B&E Tackle. He's got just an amazing assortment of flies on his website. Just amazing patterns, UV, glow in the dark. He's got lighted flies, lighted spoons, just, just amazing stuff. This particular fly is a UV. Um, they come with interchangeable skirts and uh, upgraded price with the hybrid VMC number one hook. And um, if you look closely, it is rigged pro where he's got a treble and a single hook on it. And I, I do not lose fish on this setup. Um, I would tie them myself this way if I was better at it, but I'm, I'm humbly not. Um, so I'm gonna go in to how I tie a fly um, the way I do it, um, Jeff and his crew are way, way better at it than I am. But I'm going to start with a VMC hook. Don't go cheap on hooks. Buy a good hook. And this is the fluorocarbon leader that I use. It's Berkeley Vanish 60-pound leader material. You really want to make sure that you buy nice, beefy, stiff leader material because as that fly swims through the water, you want it to whip around nicely and really get a lot of action. Um, some of these guys are using 25, 30 pound leaders and they're just not, they're not getting the right amount of action on their flies like I do with my 60 pound um, fluorocarbon here. So what we'll do first is we'll look at a fly. We'll look at this one here first. And I know that this fly has a 32 inch leader on it. The, oops, sorry. The entirety of the fly is 32 inches from my loop to the end of my hook. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, wow, that's really long. And, and I would have thought that two years ago, you know, when we started running flies and dodgers in the late 90s and uh, mid-90s, um, 24, 25, 26 inches was our length. And then, you know, we stretched it out to 28 and we got crazy at 30 inches. Now we're at 32 inches and we just keep catching more fish on them. If you look at this fly, it is rigged kind of backwards from what a lot of guys how they tie up their flies. This fly aerodynamically should be like this. You know, the way it's tied, the hook should be here. But the way I tie them is kind of upside down. So that fly looks beefier 
and bigger and swims, those tinsel hairs swim better through the water when it's upside down like that. I do not rig them the way that looks correct. I don't rig them aerodynamically. I make those hairs flutter and swim better. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie one up here for you. Grab the end of my leader material, my VMC hook. And if uh, Easton is doing the video, if he wants to zoom in on exactly what I'm doing here, I put the string, the, the line through the loop. And I'll go through that loop the same direction again. So I'm going in, coming around, coming out. And you can see I've made myself a loop there. All right, can you see that? Now, unlike knots that I'll tie for walleyes or bass, I'm only going to loop around the main line a couple of times when it's six or seven for, for those lighter species of fish. So I went like two and a half times around my main line. And with my tag end, I'm going to put it through both loops. And that's it. I'm not going to go back through. I'm not going to get all fancy. This is a simple hook. It never fails for me. And this is like a three-part thing. I'm going to hold the hook the main line and the tag end all at once and tighten these down with any knot, no matter what kind of fish you're going after, you have to lubricate, okay? And start pulling all three at the same time. Pulling the hook, the main line, and the tag end, and I'm kind of assisting that knot down. It's very stiff material and it's not easy to tie. So you, you gotta manhandle it and get it and manipulate it and do what you want it to do. Pulling tight, pushing that knot down, and I'll even use this carabiner hook to really give me a lot of leverage and get that knot cinched down really nice and tight. And I'll clip off my tag end. Okay. Now, since I want my entire leader to be 32, I can't cut it at 32 because it'll be too short. So I'm going to measure this to about 33, 33 and a half. about there. I've got that little bit extra to play with so that my entire leader is 32. Let's see, let's see here, I dropped it. Now, this, this fly we're going to tie um, that Jeff made up, really pretty. Um, it's got UV in it, a lot of pearl. I would use this color early morning, fog, uh, thick overcast behind like a some kind of a white dodger. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of all of his flies. I, there's so many flies from so many companies, it's really hard to uh, remember all the names. So I'll pick maybe like one glow bead right here. I'll pick uh, maybe a light blue, one dark blue, and like a pink to match that pearl. And I don't know how much it matters the order you put them in. I'm just going to put them on. Send it on down the line. Four of them. Four seems to be the right length, uh, the right amount of beads to make the, um, the fly sit over the treble hook nicely. So with my hook, my four beads, now, a lot of guys, this is what I was talking about before, will put this fly on so it looks right. That looks right. It's kind of aerodynamic. Wrong way, in my opinion, the wrong way. I will take this off now and put it through the way I like to do it to make that fly look nice and beefy. This way. Okay. So now those strands are really fluttering out nicely. That's gonna swim nice and big through the water. It's gonna have a lot of action. Now at the end, you want your loop. I've seen a lot of guys tie this loop directly to the pigtail of their, of their flasher. Don't do that. You want this loop to swim freely on that pigtail end. If you tie it directly too tight, you're gonna lose action. So to tie my loop, I'll kind of bend it over a couple inches and I'll pinch it a little bit just to make it easier to tie. Just twist into a loop. And that loop that sticks out, give that a half twist and stick your loop through. If you don't give it a half, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this over because I didn't give myself enough time, enough room. 
bend it over a couple inches, make your loop, twist that loop a half turn, and then make your and then make your loop through. If you don't do that half turn, your loop is just gonna slide and cinch tight on your pigtail on your dodger. I'll use my carabiner hook to pull this tight, and that knot will not slide, it'll stay that size all the time. Exactly how we like it. I'll trim my end. And there I've got a 32 inch fly with a high quality hook, beads, exactly 32 inches the way I like it. If you want to check out Jeff's stuff at B&E Tackle, he's got an awesome Facebook page. His website is configured how, however you want. You can design your own flies, pick your colors. You can have them rig them, have, a, have Jeff rig them pro like this with the treble and the single hook. Um, just amazing stuff. Check out his spoons. Check out, um, gosh, he's, he's just got so much. It's amazing. Um, if you like this video, please smash the like button. Any questions on this or any other questions, any other topics you'd like to see me cover, put it in the comment section. If you want to get out fishing this upcoming season, check out the website, message me on Facebook, or give me a call at 920-495-3302. We will have the Lund out of the winter storage building around middle of March going after walleyes and brown trout. Uh, we'll be starting the big boat season shortly after Memorial Day, beginning of June. Uh, starting with king salmon and steelhead with some lake trout mixed in. And uh, that's all I've got for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, have a happy 2020. Stay safe and we'll see you on the water. Thanks a lot.